Hi, this is your host Sapna Bharatiya and welcome to TFR Let's Talk. And today we have two guests from Intel, Mark Skarpness, VP and GM of System Software Engineering at Intel and Melissa Evers, VP and GM of Strategy to Execution at Intel. Melissa, Mark, it's great to have you both on the show. Hey, thanks, great to be here. Very excited to be here. And today's topic is something which is close to my heart as well, of course, which is open source, open ecosystem. And uh, Intel CEO Pat, uh, he recently penned a very powerful piece on LinkedIn to talk about Intel's dedication to open ecosystem. Uh, I want to go into detail of what do you folks mean by your dedication to open ecosystem. But before we go there, Melissa, can you please explain what do you folks mean by open ecosystem? How would you define it? Well, Intel's history is born on the innovation that happens through open platforms, open innovation, and horizontal competition. And the notion that the best you know, platform wins, um, whether we're competing at the hardware level, the operating system level, you know, through the layers of the software stack, enabling developers to innovate and drive the future of technology is best achieved when it's an open playing field. Um, and so that notion of open competition, open platform is inherent to the way that the ecosystem has been built, the way that the ecosystem continues to transform and the role that Intel has played in enabling that success and transformation. Excellent. Now let's talk about open source. Uh, we all know that uh, open source uh, developers, they don't like a lot of fluff. They just want to solve uh, core problems. They, they care about the code. They care about the quality of code. They care about licensing, all those things. They don't like a lot of fluff and marketing. It's also, uh, there are many open source projects which are kind of famous or infamous for not having any marketing strategy. Sometimes a lot of open source developer, they want to distance themselves from marketing because there is some misconception also about uh, marketing there. It's a different thing altogether. But it is really challenging to earn respect from open source developers. So can you share what strategy do you have or how do you plan to engage with open source developer community at a level where they do see that your efforts are authentic, it's not yet in the marketing gimmicks? Uh, because the fact is that until you folks have been doing open source for a very, very long time. So let's talk about it. Yeah, I mean, I can start, you know, I think we've, like you said, we've been, for example, in the Linux kernel community for as long as it's existed really, and continue to be one of the top contributors. And I think, you know, in general, being in the community, being a good member of the open source community, contributing, uh, bringing the community forward, not as an outside player trying to influence, but being in the community and having our engineers deeply involved in working on advancing, you know, the kernel or many other open source projects that we work in, you know, that that's really the way to be an effective, you know, member and advocate for the open source developers is to be them. You know, we are, uh, we have many open source developers at Intel doing that. Yeah, I would, I would echo what Mark said. I think, not only being a member of the community, demonstrating um, our commitment to upstreaming our work, participating in the genesis of new components and new capabilities within projects, but also just collaborating with the ecosystem and creating new products and projects. Um, Intel has given birth to a lot of things. <laughs> if you look at our history, you know, from Yocto to, oh, you know, SOF to like, you know, you, you pick the layer of the software stack. Um, you know, as Mark mentioned, we've been in the Linux community and the kernel for since it was since its inception, but um, all the way down through to the UEFI and the BIOS and firmware levels, all the way up through drivers, all the way up through microservices, et cetera, from endpoint all the way to data center. You know, Intel plays in over 200, 250 projects across the ecosystem. So, um, and it's through contributions. It's not through consumption. It's through meeting in the community, working on the challenges, looking at what the future holds, what are the technologies that are needed in order to bear forth the future of innovation and then figuring out how we can enable that successfully. That's where you earn influence um, and engagement is through your commitments, through your developers, through your code. Um, they, are, they are the agents of our change. 
I just want to uh, discuss something more, which is that uh, the the landscape has also changed. The way we uh, consume or you know engage with open source has also changed uh, because of cloud. A lot of things have changed. A lot of developers nowadays they are on the payroll of companies. You know they are like even Linux Foundation come up with a report the number of. Uh, contributor in the Linux kernel, they are like mostly getting paid to do the job. It's not, they don't turn into a Linux nights at nighttime and they do something else in the day job, which also means that the role of rules of engagements are also changing because a lot of these developers actually are working in their company times. So how have you seen uh, the open source ecosystem has changed and evolved because you have to also change your strategy to engage with them because sometimes CLAs can become an issues. A lot of things are there, you know. So, so can you share some insights on that? Yeah, you know, I think there's always this balance of my company's interest, the community's interest. You know, and I think we've really worked hard to create for our own developers a culture that gives them the freedom to, to work in the community, to serve the community interests and really contribute back for the broader good of the project. But you know, we also have work that we're doing to enable our new platforms as we bring out new products. There's kernel enabling, for example, that we're doing. So there's always that balancing act of, I'm in the community and I need to be a good member of that community and, and participate for the greater community good. And you know, it's okay to also bring along, hey, we've got a great new server platform coming out and we wanna make sure it's fully enabled. And I think if you strike the right balance between you know, being a good community member and also doing the work that, you know, brings, you know, new product support into the kernel, for example, I think we found that that works well. You know, it's where you, where if you swing too far to, I'm only going to serve my own interests and I'm not going to think about broader needs of the community, that can become a problem. And I think that's something we're always paying attention to. Are we striking the right balance and giving our engineers the freedom to do the right balance of both? you know, so that they're good community members. I would also add that I think our role, Intel's role or reputation in the community is a, a bit of a neutral broker um, because almost all of those folks you're talking about are customers or partners or, you know, part of our value chain in some form or fashion, right? So it's not like we're really close with one and not really close with another. They are all partners and friends in these communities and ecosystems and really trying to understand what are the strategic intents of all these different corporations, their engagements in the community, and then what is, and if there are folks that aren't part of those corporations that are neutral community players, what are their perspectives on the way that the technology needs to evolve and really trying to broker what is the right way? What is the authentic way? What is the scalable way? What enables the most opportunity for future innovation? Um, and I think the, our engineers do a really good job of trying to carry that mantle. Um, it's not to say that we always succeed, but it is to say that we try. And that when Pat made his call to the open ecosystem and the importance of neutral platforms for competition, I think that that really brings to that point that we need to seek what is good and what serves the benefit of humanity, what serves the benefit of the technology in and of itself inherently, and not serve specific corporate interests as much as we are trying to advance what is the right way to do something as we move forward. Now, of course, when it comes to hardware, we have evangelism <laughs> perspectives of how we think it should go. Uh, but in the same regard, that's one of the benefits of open source is the community gives us feedback and says, you know, I'm not sure that architectural spec is exactly the way we think that should be done. Um, let's have a dialogue about how we can do that in a way that um, embraces all that the community has to bring to bear. When we do talk about, you know, Community, you know, there is no community. There are communities, and those communities can be user community. That community can also be partner communities. So we talked about open source developer community, but also want to talk a bit about when we do look at this open ecosystem. Uh, what role, of course, Inter, Intel is known for partnering you, as you said, in you know, a neutral platform. So talk about uh, the strategy plans you have going forward. How much is going to change? How you're going to engage with other players? Because in some cases, some some partners may also happen to be competitors in some space. So, so, so talk about the whole strategy on partnership and partners. So it is complicated. I mean, like it, the, our role is expansive um, in the number of projects that we participate in. And, you know, we also have products and services that may not be fully open source, et cetera, serving various verticals and markets, et cetera. So 
our the landscape in which we play in technology is nuanced um, and it's not a carte blanche you know everything is this way um, and so I think we we do have an intention of being earnest and transparent with regard to our strategic intent um, it, it with partners who are customers and competitors and you know it, it really does um, challenge us to be intentional um, and we try um, despite this complexity to really operate with these players in the ecosystem um, and let the, you know with with transparency and be able to say like hey here's where we are competing here is where we are partnering you know and, and working together to try to advance an end uh, you know when Pat has talked about the IFS you know, Intel Foundry Services transformation and all the fabs that we're building, et cetera. That brings in a whole new layer of competition and partnership. Um, and as we look at what's happening in the open source ecosystem with OCP and Risk Five, et cetera, you know, the basis of what is open um, competition slash collaboration <laughs> slash, you know, et cetera, et cetera. It, it's becoming much more nuanced. And um, and so the we try to operate with integrity and transparency in those contexts, but in the same regard, recognizing that the nature of our business is very nuanced. And um, there's places where that's all totally true. Excellent. Uh, Mark, you got to add something to that? Or I, I'm also going to ask a question when it, it does come to hardware, you mentioned the partnership. We are also seeing a evolution in terms of uh, architectures. And we are also talking about GPUs, CPUs. We are looking at edge use cases. And when I say edge, I'm not talking about small sensors. I'm talking about edge data centers. So which is also changing the whole, you know, kind of chemistry or engagement you will have with partners. So can you also reflect a bit on these changes that are happening? How does that reflect on your open ecosystem, you know, strategy as well as uh, engagement with the partners? Yeah, I think it's, when you think about the breadth of that world, just how much if from the edge nodes, the device nodes, the network, the cloud, just an incredible breadth of devices. And yet there is a lot of commonality. Like when you think about where Linux gets used, it gets used across that entire spectrum or the cloud native stack, you know, as the cloud gets stretched out to the edge and even onto the, onto the device, a lot of that technology, both hardware and software is highly leverageable. And I think that's, you know, for us, such an, why it's such an exciting opportunity is, you know, building this set of core products, hardware and enabled through the software ecosystem that really can scale across that entire breadth, um, you know, from edge to device, to cloud, to network. Um, pretty amazing. I think we're going to see such incredible growth, you know, the edge and all of the things you can do as you bring compute closer um, to the user, uh, lower latency, higher bandwidth uh, compute connectivity incredible and obviously there's a there's a breadth of different compute you know from cpu to gpu to different accelerators you know which we're we're bringing to that you know breadth again across the entire spectrum and how do you plumb that into the software ecosystem and you know make it available to developers to do great things i just piling on to mark's comment with regard to the modularity that edge computing enables the software components are a lot of the software components that have existed, right? We're putting them together in new and compelling ways. Um, and I think that you know there, there are, 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 of course, new innovations, uh, particularly with regard to vertical use cases and data science and AI, et cetera. But in the same regard, there's also just a ton of innovation that's happening with the modularity that's enabled by, by containerized and VM-based technologies. I'm re reflecting on, um, our engineers took Android, for example, and created a project called Celadon, which enables, which is open source, um, and you can now run Android or Android apps or gaming services, et cetera, in VMs or containers on the edge endpoint in the data center. And these are types of things that, you know, that modularity um, enables just tr truly transformational innovations um, that open new worlds, you know, and, and that's part of the excitement that I think has inherently catalyzed Intel's commitment to open source over the years is growing what technology can solve, what neutral, open platform, software defined, whatever, you know, 
<laughs> um, as we take what has been custom ASICs of the past and and use these modular components to open incredible new markets and drive new consumption of use cases and capabilities that just never existed before. But I'm actually excited to you know how 5G private network is going to, you know, make things even more exciting next year. Uh, now I want to just uh, change gear and talk about uh, one API. We covered it here, you know, uh, at the Intel Innovation, you folks, you know, kind of, you know, also announced the launch of one API 2022. Uh, can you share, you know, what vision you folks have with one API? And once again, how do you plan to engage developers uh, with it? Absolutely. So one API is, and, it, and essentially an envisioning of that open platform competition. The world today is kind of locked in a set of proprietary verticalized um, you know, services and capabilities. And we don't think that that services the ecosystem well. Uh, we believe that letting people compete based upon the true nature of the value created is essential for the future of innovation. And so one API is essentially a collection of open source based specifications as well as open source components that we have productized in, in the one API product offering. However, it's really important for us to realize that you know, the specification and Sickle, BPC++, et cetera, are based on open components of and open specifications of direct programming models. And then the manifestations of those in terms of the ways that we productize is just a commitment to the quality and the security uh, and the usability of those offerings um, in terms of the open source efforts. Um, but for us, the, the rallying cry to the industry and the ecosystem could not be um, more clear nor more critical in the sense that we are inviting all of the ecosystem to stand up and say, yes, we believe in open. We believe in neutral platform competition. We believe that everyone is best suited when that is the basis by which innovation is driven. Um, and so those, those opportunities for collaboration and both in the specification as well as in terms of the development um, is, is part of what we hope we will continue to drive and move forward. Mark, Melissa, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about, of course, uh, open ecosystem and also open source Intel's engagement. I mean, nobody ne needs to know what Intel is doing because you folks have been doing so much things to, it's like showing a flashlight to a sun, but it's still good to talk about open source and Intel. Uh, so thanks for those insights and the time today. And I would love to have you folks back on the show. Thank you. Absolutely. It was a pleasure to be here. Hey, thank you so much, Sadno.